Hey Eric, here are the carburetors that uh, you had done uh, elsewhere. I'm simply testing them. The only uh, work I did on them was to pull the float bolt covers off, check the float levels, which I think were, in my opinion, were incorrect. I um, adjusted those, and then I um, checked the accelerator pump discharge uh, for um, flow and um, angle shooting into the throat of the carburetors. Other than that, I have not done anything to these except put them on there and test them for you. In terms of mounting them, uh, when the, uh, once you get them mounted, be sure to put them on there loosely to where they, the carbs will wiggle up and down, and then you will install your air log. And then you will go back in and um, uh, tighten down the carburetors because you can, you can tighten down the carburetors first and then try to put the air log on and the carbs will be out of adjustment uh, and you, you have to undo everything anyway. So um, mount the carbs loosely, install the air log, and then go back in and start to snug down your uh, top bolts here just to keep the carburetors uh, from moving. Pull the air log off and finish up with the rest of the bolts. All you need to use is a quarter inch drive wobble socket, which works great to get underneath here. And you don't need much torque. Uh, remember, you've got a, um, a sleeve in here and wave washers that act, of li act as limit stops. And all you need to do is a uh, quarter inch drive uh, ratchet will snug these down just fine. You're not holding together the Eiffel Tower. Very critical. Always use a wrench on the fuel fitting in the carburetor itself to stabilize that fitting as you work with these um, swivel fittings. Otherwise, you, uh, as you well know, you can rip out the fitting if you're not careful. Excuse me. Uh, let's take a quick tour here. Uh, the before we do the cold start, you will not really need to do much in terms of adjustments. What adjustments you do have available to you right here? You can adjust these screws in and up and down, in and out. And I just realized. They didn't get this one. Just realized they didn't get this one lined up correctly. That screw right there. It's supposed to be lined up on that lever. Right. Anyway, what I was going to say is these screws, uh, these jam nuts and screws, screw in and out to adjust the height of the levers right here so that they will both uh, be at the same level and coincide with the uh, cable coming down uh, the choke cable coming down check, uh, check your choke cable first for movement um, lube it up as, as you can as you need to and then um, install it and then you notice that uh, the uh, cable is pretty hard to pull and the pre reason for that of course is you're pulling straight up with the cable and yet these levers are coming out at an arc so it's a Rube Goldberg operation that uh, just barely works uh, but it, it, it works um, let's see oh yes um, idle mixture screws right here we'll be adjusting those later on and uh, you'll be able to adjust these to match your exact engine and uh, we'll explain that um, in a little bit um, G55 idle jets when the car will rev up but come down to idle and it dies these are your problems right here uh, this is a dummy jet on this side just plugging a hole but they are both the same so if you happen to be out in the field and the car won't idle switch jets because one or one or the other of the jets is clogged and um, your, your best friend in this situation is a b12 and spray down in there clean it out and then also clean out the jet um, I will adjust the second barrel clearance this is a little loose we'll tighten it up a little bit and this relationship is uh, is strange so what you've got is your um, throttle lever that as it opens up it allow it um, and then when you uh, get above 3000 rpm the vacuum operates and opens up the second barrel now then when you slam the throttle closed 
there is these follower screws right here that artificially close the second barrel. That's why you need to have uh, proper clearance because if you have these too tight, they can actually artificially open the first barrel because they're since they're they're connected. Um, and so you have to make sure that you don't have these set up too tight where you're um, artificially opening up the first barrel and increasing your idle. Back here we have the set screw that controls cold start. And what you're doing is this lever right here is, uh, and that screw is impinging on the lever below here that operates the, that is your choke right here. And that lever uh, clearance uh, between the set jam screw and the uh, lever underneath here is uh, set at 15 thousandths. And you need to be aware of that because as you adjust your idle here, and say you want to adjust this uh, screw up or down here, well, you're adjusting this jam screw closer or further away from your uh, from the lever it, Im uh, it impacts, and so that can adjust your and change your uh, 15 thousandths clearance. So you can see everything's interconnected, and it's a, that's that's why everybody loves these carburetors. Like I say, Solex carburetors were the reason fuel injection was invented. Obviously, make sure you got good uh, linkage here. Um, I mean, you know, not worn out. Now then, let's see. I think. See if there's anything else. All right, let's try. A, this is an actual cold start. And you can't adjust the carburetors until they get warmed up. Oh, by the way, this is your this is what you need for adjusting. It's called the STE synchrometer. And the version you need is this one right here, the BK1 to 35 kilograms per hour. Right out of the box, this is perfect for the 190SL uh, Solex. See, batteries connected. Um, okay. Let's see, I think we've got everything going here. Oh, um, let's see. Obviously, make sure you got a good fuel pump. I think I saw in your pictures you got a new fuel pump. All right, so we're going to choke. And you notice when you're choking, you're actually moving the lever right here, the throttle lever. So your choking is actually obviously closing the butterfly, but you're also uh, opening up the throttle. All right, switch on. That's not bad cold, not bad at all. So we're going to warm these things up so we can adjust them. To show you how to adjust them, I've already adjusted them. That's why it's running so nicely. Temperature here. Get my flashlight.
interesting. I, I never noticed this engine vibrating enough to shake the camera. That's weird. Hmm. All right, thermostat is open. Okay. First thing we want to do, get these things running independently of each other. Disconnect the throttle linkage. And of course, make sure you don't have a runaway carburetor. Before we do anything, we want to make sure our second barrels are closing. And that's uh, all that is is due to uh, machine work and the uh, uh, assembly. And, we'll, and the factory setting is around two and a half is uh, what the factory was would did uh, would accomplish. So we've got uh, pushing on the second barrel counterweight, and you see it, it'll stuck down to one one and a half. Now that that probably is just a tight uh, fit on the shaft. And they'll should wear in eventually. Same thing over here. Push on the counterweight. You see it adjusted a little bit, but we're at one, one and a half. And that's, that's, that's great. In terms of, I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyway, that's good, uh, good tight fit on the uh, second barrel. Now we go to our first barrel of each carburetor, so we have uniform airflow. Obviously, I've already already adjusted these so they're uniform, but make sure you're pulling up on your your throttle linkage to simulate the spring. So we're running about five right there, and over here. And in five as well. Well, I've already adjusted these, as you can tell. But if you want a different idle, obviously, you just adjust each screw up as, as you so desire to get whatever idle you want. Um, now we're going to adjust the idle mixture screw. And this screws in and out, and uh, you screw it in, you're going to get, uh, you're going to decrease the idle. When you screw it out, you're going to decrease the idle, and what you're going to do is uh, get the midpoint to where the, I'm sorry, that's the G55, my bad over here. So we're going to screw it in until the engine stumbles, back it out until it stumbles and get the midpoint. See it degrading? Alright, let's back it out. Recover. And this is not an exact science. You just have the feel of it. Starting to degrade again. We go back in. Let it recover. Now what I like to do is use this engine analyzer. We are running idle. This is our RPM right here. And we're going to switch over to the low scale. Our idle currently is six, about between 650 and 700. So I'm going to adjust the idle mixture screw until I get the, my best idle. And you'll see the, as it, how the RPM will degrade and then we're going to get our best, our maximum idle. There we go, dropping, backing out. We go to seven. Then we go back down, so we go back in. We have about seven, seven point five. Up to seven fifty now with the other carburetor.
decrease in idle is I pulled up on the uh, second carburetor's throttle linkage. And coming back out. Yep, I'm degrading. Alright, let's get the midpoint here. It takes some feel and a little bit of time to do this. It's not exact science. Let me clear the carburetor. Check that with idle mixture screw. 650. Picked up a little bit. Next time you go back to the grade, I'll just, just very minute. Eighth of the sixteenth of a turn. I'm working primarily with the second part here right now. It seems to be the one that's most sensitive. Least sensitive. I'm going to leave it there. Try the front one again, just in case. Let me pick up some more. Nope, not that way. Yep, we're good where we were. Go back on the high scale and clear. Got a nice idle at 600. It actually should be about 700, so I'm going to bounce it up on each carburetor. To 700. Come back here. Then we check our airflow of each carburetor. You see, we're running six. Six there, just a smidge under six. I'm gonna... There we go. All right, try a hot start. Nice, okay. Things that we're also gonna be aware of, that you need to be aware of, and it's going to drive you crazy. All right, every once in a while these carburetors are going to flood on you. And the flooding could be because this check ball is got this plug on the inside here. Another thing that can happen is there's a check valve inside the float bowl. And that can lead to... the discharge nozzle dripping fuel which will give you a running miss. Right now we're okay. You can see the discharge bending over here. 
and make sure there's no dripping fuel coming out of here. Another thing you have to be aware of is the um, what I call the pre-atomizer. This device right up inside here. Make sure they're not loose. You just stick your finger in there and make sure they're not loose. They will loosen up on you. Ah, that one's loose. Look at that. Alright, good thing we checked it. Alright, how about over here? The first barrels, if they're loose, they're a direct conduit right into the uh, float bowl and they'll just flood the engine. Okay. I believe you've got a good set of carburetors here that will do just fine. They are equal to, and in some instances, better than factory. I am at your disposal if you need any questions answered or have any comments. Oh, I'll, uh, by the way, idle mixture screw on the second barrel is closed off. The idle mixture screw is closed off. It only The only idle on the first barrel of each carburetor. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Eric. Take care.